So as usual, let's first start off with the deck. The deck's length is about 38 and a half inches in length and about 10 and a half inches in width. And the deck is made up of multi-layered composite material. The new Nomad N3 has a split angle deck based off of his very popular Nomad N1 deck, but they improved in making it wider and reducing the W concave on both ends of the deck to make it more comfortable. They also completely redesigned the grip tape, which I like a lot better. It has that more serious stealth look and also now has padded grip tape. But in my personal opinion, the W concave on this is still more aggressive than most boards out there. By using this pole, you can witness the gaps that show you how aggressive the W concave is. As for the wheels, A-Stack is utilizing 180 millimeter vacuum tires with the CNC aluminum hub. I've said this in a few other videos, not a lot of production boards make a nice quality metal rim. Besides A-Stack doing it in the past with the Ares X1 and of course their Nomad N1, the only companies I've seen do it is Propel with the Pivot GT. Meepo came out with a really dope pair called the Cyclones, but they stopped making these exact ones and replaced them with these. But I don't like these ones at all. What's good about the new Nomad N3 is the tire actually has a tube inside. So no more tubeless tires. So now you can change up to any type of pneumatics you want and put them on these super nice hubs. Me personally, I like a lower profile tire, something like this 155 millimeter Metro board tire, but they did stop making that. There is an upside to having a bigger tire, which gives you more clearance. The 180 millimeter vacuum wheels do give you great clearance. So with a bigger battery set up like this, your enclosure will be larger and thicker. So it is important to have good clearance on a board like this. I will say this, it is a great feeling just being able to run over anything and not worrying about getting stuck on anything. I just simply ride over pretty much anything Thing in my path but these tires can basically handle anything off-roading sand grass sidewalks and of course great grip check it out As for the trucks, these are their brand new Precision's CNC traditional kingpin trucks that are 13.8 inches in width. With redesigned bridge angles, hangers, and still CNC machine with a 10 millimeter axle, it comes out of the box with two different durometers, 92A white durometer bushings and also 100A black durometer bushings. So Ace Deck again listened to the customers and utilized the option to have two different bushings for different rider styles and different weight classes. I've always said the more options, the better. So given that this is their fourth generation trucks with all this polished CNC, it reminds me of the Terminator skull. I just really like this raw looking design. It makes the setup look way more aggressive. 
Now, ASTEC claims these traditional kingpin trucks have the same turning capabilities as a double kingpin truck. I respectfully disagree, but don't get it twisted. These still turn very well and carve awesome. And of course, once you dial in your bushings, the stability is great. As for the remote, no surprises here. You got five speed modes, L for low, E for eco, S for sport, S plus for sport plus mode. You have two battery indicators, one for the remote, one for the board. You have an arrow indicator to show you're going in reverse or forward. The BR is for braking levels, so you can adjust your brake levels depending on how you like it as a rider. Then you got your trip on the bottom and your total miles on the bottom as well. Then if you click the power button once on the bottom, it will display what current setting you have the board set at. Now there's not many production eboard companies that have this amount of adjustments and selections that you can choose from with your production board. I know Tiny has something similar, Evolve, Entra, and Backfire have something a little bit more advanced, but those remotes are more expensive. Also, don't forget to add on the CNC remote bumper shell for your new board. They have chrome, purple, blue, gold, and red. I just think it's worth the protection and it's definitely a dope final touch for your nice ace deck board. Ace deck is utilizing a four amp charger. I wish it was at least a five amp charger because the standard charger can take up to six hours to charge the board from zero to full. But I do love the convenient top mounted charging port. As for the lights, first off, I don't know any other board with this battery capacity with built-in lights. There's LED strips on each side of the enclosure and also more lights on the front side of the enclosure directly behind the trucks. Now, anytime you yank on the brakes, even if the lights are off, the brakes will flicker and I think that's a good thing. Flashing illumination alerts other riders, pedestrians, and cars. As for the ESC, this is an updated revamped ESC that is much smoother than the Nomad. Pushing 145 amps, you will have plenty of power with this setup. And from what I can gather, you have easy access with these bolts in case you need to replace the ESC. ASEX updated gear drive is their 4.0, 100% steel, incredibly quiet and smooth, fully enclosed design gear drive. They're utilizing DXW 6384 150 kV motors. This alloy steel gear drive setup is more compact, lightweight, and more durable. All the gears are made from high strength stainless steel, thermally treated 42 CRMO steel, achieving hardness of 45 to 55 degrees HRC. With the new 4.0 gear ratio, utilizing the NYX motors, and the new 145 amp ESC. Not only is the performance and efficiency top notch, but it is very, very quiet. All right, acceleration test. Great drop down right here. One, two, three, go. Woo! Nice. So with this new ESC, I don't want to say they took away power, but they tamed it, meaning the acceleration isn't crazy anymore, but it is still powerful as hell. Uh, let's do that mid-range power that I like. Let's do 25 miles per hour and pull. All right, one, two, three, pull. Woo! Nice. Hell yeah. Now I'm going up a hill. I'm going to do it again. One, two, three, pull. Woo! Beautiful. Okay, guys, here we go. Giant hill test. Same hill we always use. Ace Deck Nomad N3. Got the rider app going. High performance boards usually do 27 to like 32 ish up this hill. S plus mode, full battery. Let's do it. And one, 
two, three, throttle. God! Jesus Christ, this thing's flying! Oh, I just let off. I let off a little early. I definitely let off early, but let's see the rider app. 33.1 miles per hour up the hill. And again, I let off early. Woof! Okay, so remember with the Ares X1 gear drive and the ASEC Nomad N1, it had that crazy dead spot. While you're cruising, you let go of the throttle, you're just having a good time, you're cruising, and then you go to throttle again, and it's hard to find the matching speed with your throttle. No more. That is not a problem anymore. They finally smoothed that out, and it's absolutely perfect. The funny thing is, as time went on, I didn't get more used to it. I hated it more. And I'll tell you why. It's because I have so many boards, when I switch from different boards to different boards and different ESCs, I realized that that ESC on the Nomad and the Aries just wasn't for me. That dead spot while cruising was a deal breaker for me. The dead band from the stop to the go, I'm okay with that. And it actually, it's improved with here. So... There is not a crazy delay anymore, but it still gives you a tiny bit of delay for room for error, which is good. So, I mean, it's super smooth and yet super powerful. So top notch to ASEC for fixing that ESC. It is absolutely perfect now. I am so happy with this. Okay, top speed test. Now, the only issue I'm having with the top speed test here is that the tires are a bit wobbly. Nothing crazy, but you definitely feel it. I think having a metal hub makes the wobbling a little worse. I've always said that. That's why I prefer a plastic hub. I know not a lot of people might agree with that, but that's just what I feel because it's really tough to get a, a balanced tire. Perfect. But I'm going to do my best. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to gradually get up there because, again, it's a little tricky with the unbalanced tire. Let's do it. Full throttle. That's got a lot of juice, man. Whew. Absolute performance beast. Let's see what my top speed was. 36.3 miles per hour. Okay, let's do a brake test. The brakes are adjustable. Mine are set at 85%. So you can tame it down if you want, or you can increase it if you want, but I'm at 85, 15 miles per hour. One, two, three, brake. Perfect. Honestly, I am so happy with the tweaking they did with this ESC. I'm serious. I am so happy with it. This is now an awesome board, monster for a powerhouse board. As for the battery, the version we have is the 14S 6P Molosel P42A 25 amp hour 1305 watt hour battery. The total weight of the board is 44.3 pounds and it has a water resistance rating of IP65. Even though this machine is incredibly well put together, I still never recommend riding in any type of wet terrain. And in my opinion, the board is just too nice to get wet. As for range, I'm a 155 pound rider and the temperature was about 45 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit during my testing. I got a total of 41 miles of range with the stock setup riding mostly on the streets. I did a mix of riding in S plus mode and S mode the entire time. Even though it wasn't freezing cold, I think if it was warmer, I would have got a little more range. So I got my 25% warning about three miles ago. We'll see how the power is and up a small hill. One, two, three, go. Two, three, go. Still plenty of power with probably 15% left.
worth mentioning. Now the stock tires not only had a little bit of wobble in them, 180 millimeter tire just isn't my preference. They feel heavy, chunky, and makes the board feel heavier built underneath my feet. Now, since I'm a smaller rider, I prefer a lower profile tire, but that doesn't mean that you will be turned off to this tire. You might love the tire, but I personally don't love it. So I think if Ace Deck made about 160 to 170 millimeter tire, that would be really cool for other smaller riders like myself. As for this giant front handle, not only do I think it compromises the look of the board, but I also got sticks caught in it while I was riding. Now, at first, I didn't think this would be a big deal, but then I thought, what if that twig got caught in the actual spokes of the rim? That could probably send me launched off the board. Don't get it twisted. The handle has very good attributes. Since it's a bigger, heavier board, you could just simply pick it up by the handle and drag it where you need to go. It can also be used as a front bash guard in case it goes rolling into a wall or anything. Another topic worth mentioning is Aestec stock bushings. I just feel like they never really got it right. I just feel like Ace Deck has done so good in such a short period of time, I'm surprised they haven't perfected bushings yet. But we all know it's easy and cheap to replace the stock bushings anyway. So I removed that giant handle up front, replaced the stock tires with Trampa 6.5 inch tires, kept one of their 100A bushings in the rear board side, mixed with a 93A Riptide in the rear, along up front with 90A and 93A up front. And boy, did this board come alive. Check it out. All right, the placement of this W concave that's all in here in the middle. Now, I don't personally love that because when you're wearing shoes that are skate shoes, they're super flat in the soles, right? So when you feel this in between your feet, it's not exactly there for your arch, in my opinion. It's just kind of getting in the way. So a little W concave, I'm okay with, but in my opinion, it's a little much. But if you're a bigger rider, it mellows out right here. Now, I don't put my foot normally there when I ride. I only do it when I'm launching okay or a higher speed so if i'm carving my foot is actually more like right here so i'm a shorter guy i have a smaller stance so you bigger riders i don't think this would be a situation for you because most of you guys will have your foot back here and you have that nice drop down to help you out and the w concave is more like right here it kind of dies kind of dies down right there so in my opinion i don't love the w concave but i know a lot of you bigger guys will like it final thoughts if you're a rider that is looking for a big range, high powered board that has the best performance and range in its class, along with great customer service and plenty of features, all under $1,900, and this is definitely the way to go. For those of you who haven't seen my DIY video, my M board endurance review, and the Propel Pivot GT review, all three of those boards are insanely powerful, and I still love those boards. But I did a separate video before this review exposing that this board beat all of those boards easily up a giant hill. So if you wanna kinda of skip that middle class of boards and you wanna go straight to the higher class boutique boards, I would suggest going straight to this. Look at the Nazar Super Sport from the LaCroix. That was originally about 4,100 US dollars. The Cali NYC XL40, that was about $3,900. Even the Cali 2.0 was a 12S4P and that was on sale for $1,900 and everybody lost their mind. I honestly think it's safe to say if you're considering a boutique board, look at Ace Deck. Thank you for watching guys. Please comment, like, share, subscribe. Have a good one guys.